This is my boomstick! Shields up, Iron Breakers. We're kind of here coming at you with another video, and today we're going to be talking about Monster Hunter World. More specifically, we're going to be talking about my Gunlands build. Now, before we get into the build itself, I would just like to bring up the point that, look, there are tons of ways in which you can play Monster Hunter World. Most of those ways are going to be viable, so this build is by no means the end-all, be-all build for the Gunlands. As a matter of fact, I don't believe that such a build exists. It all depends on your personal playstyle and what kind of monster you are facing off against. But having said that, the build that I'm going to show you pretty much reflects my personal approach to the game, which is high risk, high reward, and just like try to dish out as much damage as possible. Another thing that I would like to bring up is that I feel that a lot of people overemphasize shelling when it comes to Gunlands. Now look, I get it, shelling is amazing, and shelling is the defining characteristic of a Gunlands, but shelling is not the only thing that the Gunlands can do. As a matter of fact, the most used combo for the Gunlands, which is the Slam Full Burst combo, which eventually I will do an advanced tips video for Gunlands, which because I still haven't updated the video that I did all the way back when I started playing the game for the Gunlands, but essentially what I mean to say by this is like the Slam Full Burst combo actually has two melee hits in it. Two really good melee hits in it. So even if all you're doing is slam burst combo, shelling is very valuable. It is not the only thing that is valuable when it comes to dishing out damage with the gun lance. At least that's the way that I personally look at things. I know that there's a lot of people in the community right now that are going to disagree with that specific viewpoint, but I just wanted to let you guys know where I'm coming from before I show you the build itself. Okay, so here's the build. And I know you guys are gonna see, oh, there's the Royal Burst. That's what I'm talking about. It's like, look, I have the Royal Burst equipped because I have the Royal Burst equipped. It's, there's no particular reason. Sure, it's one of the best gun lances in the game. It is not the only gun lance in the game. When it comes to my weapon choice, it usually varies depending on the monster's weakness. So if he's weak to poison, I will bring the Royal Burst. Sometimes if he's two stars to poison, I might still bring the Royal Burst. But a lot of times if there's three stars in something else, I will bring the something else. So if there's a monster that is three star weeks to thunder, I will bring the Toby Kadachi gun lance. If there's one that's three stars weeks to fire, I'm going to bring the blue chariot, okay? I'm, I change my weapon depending on the monster that I'm fighting. That is the way that I personally like to see things. I know that there's people that even use the royal burst against monsters that are like one star weak to poison, and I don't think that's the most effective way of doing things, okay? I, I just wanna let you guys know about that. So the royal burst is there. It's not the only gun lance I use. I have most of the gun lances and I'm constantly swapping them. Anyone that has seen my live streams know that I constantly swap out my gun lance depending on which monster I am fighting. Like I said, that is my personal playstyle. Now, let's get on to the first uh, piece of gear right here, which is the Nergigante Helm. Nergigante Helm is going to give you two tiers of maximum might as well as an attack boost if you get the Nergigante Helm Alpha. So why am I getting the Alpha? Because it's very hard for you to actually get attack boost decorations. So therefore, any piece of gear that I can get that has attack boost on its alpha set, I'm getting it because I want attack boost. And we will go over why I want attack boost once we look to the overall picture, which is now on the right side. Then we got the Kushal Assist the Beta. And the main reason I got the Kushal Assist is because as you guys uh, were mentioning on my previous video, uh, a lot of you guys actually said you should get Handicraft because Handicraft is actually really good. Uh, because shelling is influenced by the sharpness. So yes, having uh, two tiers of handicraft is friggin' amazing. I'm probably not gonna go any further with it than that, but I mean, I've used other armor pieces and stuff, and there is another armor piece that I would consider for the Gunlance, which was the Part Breaker from uh, Uragon set. I really like that one, but overall, I started noticing like, look, my weapons just lose sharpness way too fast. As a matter of fact, there's a decoration that I'm going to be going over before we're done with this particular video, uh, which would address that particular concern of mine. So for now, the current build has Kushala Sista, two tiers of handicraft, and I like it a lot because it does make a difference. It also allows me to use the Valhazak gun lance, which to me, without having two tiers of handicraft, that gun lance is unusable. The sharpness is that bad, okay? And it is my favorite gun lance when it comes to dragon damage. So there you go. 
Then we got the Kaiser Van Braces for the weakness exploit. We got the alpha version because the beta version only has tier one weakness exploit. And that is another decoration that is pretty hard to get. So I went with the alpha, get tier two weakness exploit. Uh, but in the final build, we actually have tier three weakness exploit. So keep that in mind. Then we got the Nergigante Coil for the attack boost. It is one of the best belts that you can currently get. It's got two attack boost. It's pretty much a no brainer. Then we got the Dorogama Greaves for the capacity boost. Now you guys might wonder what the hell is capacity boost. This right here increases your, uh, your number of shells by one. So like if you have a normal gun lance, a normal shelling gun lance, you're going to have six shells. If you have a long one, you're gonna have four shells. If you have a wide one, you're gonna have three shells, okay? And then we have artillery charm three which gives us tier three artillery. You can upgrade the, the artillery charm all the way up to tier three, get yourself maximum artillery. And in my opinion, the two things that I would not trade over anything in this build, okay? Like most of the things in this build, you can swap around to suit your own personal playstyle. There are two things that I wouldn't trade over anything. And that is tier three artillery and capacity boost because that is the shelling aspect of the gun lance. And I know I just said a lot of people overemphasize it. And it's like, while I don't overemphasize the shelling, I definitely like to get maximum gains on that shelling. And having the Dorogama Greaves and the Artillery Charm Tier 3 is definitely something that I would not go without when it comes to a Gunlance build. Now let's look to the overall picture on the right side. So once the build is complete the way that I personally have it, you're going to have Tier 4 Attack Boost, Tier 3 Weakness Exploit. We're getting... Uh, one weakness exploit decoration because I was lucky and I got one last night. Uh, so that is actually the, um, the decoration that I have on the Nergigante coil right there because you got two slots on Nergigante coil. Uh, I mean, uh, you got one slot for a tier two gem and the weakness exploit is a tier two gem. So there you go. I put the weakness exploit in there. Then we have tier three artillery. And for those of you guys that don't know what, what these skills do, by the way, I should be showing it. So the weakness exploit Every time you hit a weak spot, you're gonna have 50% increased affinity. And for those of you that don't know what affinity is at this point, essentially is a chance of you getting 25% increased damage whenever you hit the monster. And in this case, you get 50% increased affinity if you hit weak spots. This means heads, tails, and on certain monsters, there are soft underbelly, you know, depends on monster to monster, the wings. There are certain places where you're gonna hit harder. These are the places that show an orange. So whenever you hit one of those spots, you get 50% increased affinity. That is 50% chance of you dealing 25% increased damage, which is pretty good in my opinion. So that's the way that I roll with the weakness exploit. Um, then the attack boost, for those of you who don't know, this gives you increased attack. And in my case, once you get it to level four, which is tier four of attack, you get plus 12 attack and you get 5% affinity, which again, increases your chance to deal 25% uh, additional damage. Uh, so we got attack boost, weakness exploit. We go to artillery. Artillery right there, uh, we have it at level three. It is going to increase the power of each attack by 30%. That is any gun lance shell. So the full, the full burst combo, for instance, like all of those shells are dealing 30% increased attack damage. And it's also reducing the Wyvern's Fire cooldown by 50%. Even though I don't use Wyvern's Fire all that often, it's still nice that basically whenever you want to use it, you can. If this brings it down to like a minute. You can Wyvern's Fire every minute. It's pretty damn good. Next skill is Handicraft, which we have at tier two, which comes from the Kushala system. Like I said, this increases your weapon's sharpness gauge. This can actually tier up the sharpness gauge so some some weapons you have blue this is going to get them into white sharpness but mostly this is just so that you don't have to sharpen your weapon as often then we have speed sharpening now speed sharpening is really good because you can sharpen your weapon faster so basically it keeps you in the game faster uh gets you back in the game faster once your sharpness goes down because like we've said sharpness goes down you're dealing less damage both in melee as well as um as well as shells. Shells are also affected by sharpness. And naturally, on certain monsters, you will start you will even start bouncing off. So you'll want to sharpen your weapon as fast as possible. Get back into the fray. So speed sharpening tier 2 is what I got right now. Although, I'll be honest, I'd be open to swapping some of these out for additional attack. But I still don't have any more attack, so I'm keeping with speed sharpening. And I actually might consider speed sharpening to be a final skill in the build as well. Then we have... 
tier two maximum might. Now maximum might increases your affinity whenever your stamina is full. And with the gun lance, basically after you position yourself to dish out the damage, your stamina is gonna be full most of the time because none of your attacks actually consume stamina. You only consume stamina when you block and when you are running to get into position. So most of the time you're gonna have full stamina. And if you're struggling with that, get yourself like, uh, what's the drink, the, the dash juice. Get yourself dash juice, get yourself a wiggly litchy. Just, you know, make sure that you got maximum stamina whenever you possibly can. This is going to increase your stamina by a flat 20%, which is pretty damn good. Especially if you are hitting weak spots like heads, this is going to bring your affinity to 20%, uh, 70% because of the weakness exploit we already have. That means you're going to be critting a lot, which is good stuff in my book. Then we got the poison attack. The poison attack is just the gem that I have on the royal burst. I tend to swap out the gems in my weapons depending on what I feel like doing. Like if you really want to, you can get the final tier of speed sharpening instead of the poison buildup stuff. It's completely up to you. This is a bit of optional because like I said, I like to swap out my weapons. So that particular gem slot, I tend to just swap it out depending on the situation, depending on the weapon that I'm using. This gets swapped out a lot. Then we have part breaker. So this is a temporary gem. I'm actually not using Part Breaker in this build, even though, like I said, I do like Part Breaker a whole lot, and that is something that you can experiment with if you want to. You can experiment by using the Uragon chest piece, which is really good, in my opinion, but the problem with the Uragon chest piece is that it has very few slots left, and I want it to have more slots so that I can max out both weakness exploit, as well as potentially getting um, a couple of more interesting things that I'll bring up in a couple of seconds here. So this particular part is temporary. Uh, it's a part breaker thing. The gem that I would likely, uh, that I would actually like to have in there is the um, protective polish decoration, which in my opinion is a fantastic decoration, but I haven't got it yet. So that's one of the things that I'm grinding for. And protective polish will essentially apply a protective polish whenever you sharpen your weapon. And that is going to allow your sharpness not to decrease for a full minute. Yes, it is the Odogaron four piece set bonus. There is a decoration that essentially does that. So uh, while I don't want to get the Odogaron set because, you know, the, that would just completely destroy almost all the skills that I have on this particular set, I do want to have that specific ability. And when I get that, this set is going to be way better than it already is. And then the final skill is Capacity Boost, which increases your shell capacity like I mentioned previously. So this is the final build. Um, like I said, there is wiggle room for you to tweak a couple of things around like maybe you want a little bit more attack you can swap out speed sharpening for that but personally i think that speed sharpening is really going to uh go hand in hand with the protective polish gem that i will bring to replace part breaker when i eventually get that and that would just like lock the build down and that would be the the way that i would play the the gun lance it's Super satisfying to play Gunlance this way. You just dish out massive amounts of damage, and that's the way that I personally like to play. Like I said, if you like playing more defensive, that's fine. The two things that I would advise you to, to still do is get your Artillery Charm 3 and get your Dodogama Greaves, or get those particular skills some other way in whatever way you prefer. This is the way that I would do uh, a Gunlance build. This is the way that I play, and this is the way that I love playing the Gunlance. Now, the other advantage whenever you are working on a Gunlance build is that the Dorogama Greaves and the Artillery Charm, you will also be able to use those for a Charge Blade build because the Charge Blade also benefits quite a bit from Artillery and Capacity Boost. And you guys will see why when I do my Charge Blade build video. But um, that's going to be it for now, you guys. Let me know what you think about this build in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.